to start off with the right sound levels instead of trying to get there. And are there um, plans to develop, I guess, uh, it would be west of where the dinosaurs are, where the, um, so next, next to the camels where there's um, the refuge area right mm -hmm. now. Will that remain as it is, or is that? West of the camels. I'm sorry, maybe. The west east. of camels is east of the east. dinos. East sorry, of the east. Wrong sorry. Way. Yeah, wrong way. Um, it's right across from where um, uh, there's. Fort Jordan. Right. Oh, uh, just west of the Elk. Right. So, yeah. the, if, so there's green space there right now, and then there's Elk. There's is that uh, going to be developed? Is there, no, there a there's plan? no plan. That right now is a uh, bird holding. Okay. For the. Um, Birds that aren't on exhibit, yeah. So there's no plan for that right now. Either. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lori Lucy. I live at eight seven seven five Lincoln. So I don't actually even live across from the zoo, but I walk in this neighborhood all the time. And we've lived here twenty some years, and I've always loved living close to the zoo. And I I do now walk by that penguin house all the time, and I think those poor people that just bought that house in the corner, because they are, it's, they've got the air conditioning units, and it's just really unattractive, and I feel like it must have really hurt their property values. So I'm just standing up, I don't live directly across from the zoo, but I also think that corner at uh, Ludlow and Huntington does look really horrible right now, where the trees came down and all the construction stuff is. So I just feel for these people that live right across from the zoo, and even as a person who just walks by, I feel like it affects the neighborhood and affects all the residents. Thank you for your feedback. Well, let me ask you a question just to make sure that we're all on the same page. And I'm sorry if I'm interrupting a public comment. Um, what landscaping is going to be done, if any, to mitigate <coughs> the clearance of those trees? And how will things look in the future after so that landscaping is done. You mean for tigers, Aaron? Well, I, I, I guess my, maybe we should establish a foundation for my question. There has been tree removal on the corner of Ludlow and Huntington. A lot of it, people believe, and I believe too. Uh, is there going to be anything done to take care of that, to compensate for it, so it doesn't look like it looks now? Yes. And what is that? Uh, conifers, cedars. And, and can you describe a little bit about the height of those trees, what those trees actually are going to look like for those who don't know what a conifer yeah. or a cedar looks like? I could probably do it best with these um, diagrams here. Okay. So our, our plan for the tiger forest, as you can see, is to, here's Huntington Road, sure. so is to plant that up all along Huntington Road. And then specifically, uh, that's that's the plan for what the view from Huntington Road would look like. And when's that going to be done? Fall. Fall. Some spring, some fall. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sorry, this is the tigers? That's the tigers, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that all right if we take a photo? Sure. Sure. That's not what the road to. That's that's what you're planning them. <laughs> <laughs> no, some some of both. I mean, some of these the scale I mean, are sixty foot high. You don't. I realize those are big. That's why I'm asking. They're, they're huge. No, so they All won't right. be this big. All right. But they'll what be. What size will they be when they go in? Um, vary. They, they vary. Um, will you be able to see what those sizes are when you come in? Like as tall as I am, some of them. Some of them larger. There'll be some, but. If you don't do conifers, then all you look to is a trunk, so that doesn't help. And then specifically, uh, this is the design for trout for the shrubs. And the, again, those are low, but there's about a thousand of those. You can see those in each spot of the shrub. And then these are uh, for the planting for the trees. I mean, they'll start at, call it six to eight feet. I mean, it's not even feasible to plant anything much larger. Right. So, so I just want ten feet. I want everybody to work. 
to understand it. Nice old yeah. yeah. grown trees and uh, no, they won't. I'm just setting expectations and like you said, I wouldn't expect that, but they'll grow that probably in stages. Right, right. Eventually. And just out of curiosity, how quickly do those trees grow? Just so we can get our. Foot a year. Okay. Um, another question that I have, because you heard a lot of the folks who are speaking, and if again I'm interrupting public comment, I apologize. Talk about communication. And I think we have to get to the root causes why the communication broke down this time. Have you explored that, and um, are any measures being taken to make sure this doesn't happen yeah, again? You know what? It all starts with me. I made a mistake, Andy. Okay. I mean, just, and yeah. again, we yeah, all make guess, mistakes. I, you know, I thought I'd covered it at the planning commission meeting. I talked briefly with Amy and Bob about it. Mm -hmm. So I figured we were good to start, but that wasn't enough. Okay. So I'll take full accountability. Thank you. That. Thank you. And look, we're all failable. And, and, and no, I don't need to do any investigation <laughs> because all I had to do was look in the mirror. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, whoever does it for the runs, you should, I mean, they would be great for this, like I said, for the runs. I, I well, remember, I mean, it, and I'll, I'll, I'll also I can't, I can't implore the help of my colleague, <coughs> Paul. That's all coming out of my office, so I don't yep. know the runs. So I have a question, because we have not seen a plan of the Tiger exhibit That's since the month. trees have come down. I know, but you seem to have a drawing here, and I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if this is Huntington Road, mm -hmm. what's this? That's a viewing window. So, so it's let me, not let me really a habitat. It's a building. No. So there's no additional construction uh, buildings or anything. Um, so currently the tiger habitat's 10,000 square feet. It's getting expanded to 33,000. So nice. three times as big. There's going to be a viewing window here, a viewing window here. Uh, which is currently, like right in here is where Dinosauria currently starts. So it takes over part of that. And this is the malt wall here. Uh, there's a water feature here. And a water feature here. Is, is that like a loud waterfall? Or what, I mean, is that, I'm, is that a loud waterfall? Or, or no. Just like a waterfall? Or, I'm just curious. I, no, it'd be loud like, like a bubbling brook. That could brook. be a good thing. That's soothing. Yeah, no, it's not. No, it won't be a lot of waterfall. So there's going to be more clearing of trees to make space no. for that viewing no. area? No, it's no. cleared it's now. It's all done. Yeah, and where you see the berming on the east end, mm -hmm. that's that's where it's finished. Okay. Yeah. So will the berm you know what? be replaced? Guys, that guys let, let's, um, I, I let this get a little bit out of hand. Let's continue with... Uh, comment, people standing up, asking questions. If you want to do it again, come up to the podium, that's fine. We're not going to have one per customer type thing. So who would like to go next and ask any question? Anyone? So we keep it organized? If I may. Sure. Um, it's not clear to me. What is... Uh, you want to just say your name again for the I'm record? Sorry. Yeah. Maria Vini, 866 Huntington Road. Okay. What is there going to... I assume there's going to be some sort of inner fence on the Huntington Road side? That's correct. To keep the tigers from becoming yeah. too close yeah. as neighbors? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I would be, I'm looking in the future down towards where I live. I would hope that that was whatever you're going to put in there to uh, make it more attractive visually to us, to Linda, to Richard, and the folks that are in Rachel, that are directly affected right now, that it was be dense enough and tall enough so that those folks would be pleased with what you were doing yeah. initially. No, and our plan is to start some of that this year with it so that it has time to grow. Excellent. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm not sure I understand what a viewing window is. Is that a structure or is it? Well, let me show you, Jane. I'll just get an old there so I know. Um, so this, this is the one viewing window here. And maybe some of you have seen a, a prop where you, you've got a Land Rover where kids can view, okay? 
tigers on the other side of the glass. Okay. So but it's basically a, uh, uh, a metal frame structure uh, with a roof and glass. So Where have you been to the zoo, Jane? Of course. Okay, it's a lion exhibit viewing window. I, I, yes. Okay, it's very similar, except it'll have a roof on it. And just so people appreciate, this is going to be part of the site plan application that will be formally presented to us for a review because it does, correct me if I'm wrong, and fall within the 120-foot uh, zone that uh, we, we, we retain jurisdiction over, correct? So is this between Huntington Road yes, and, well, see, and we don't have where, where on the map on is it? it, it at this point in time, Mr. Chairman, we, we are in the process of getting the plans. Zoo hasn't given us the sets of plans yet the, for the next month's site plan review. So we couldn't really comment on what it is. As you're seeing this for the first time, so are we. Okay. So um, with all due respect, this is part of the site plan process, right. which we would anticipate seeing in, in its entirety next month. Thank you for that clarification. Just to answer your question, Ms. Solomon. Here's the two viewing areas. Uh -huh. Here's Huntington Road. I see. So, so it's, it's not anywhere. it's not here. I think that was your question. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. It's on the eastern edge. Okay. The current building is here. So since we haven't seen plans, are your plans changing? You seem to have a lot of plan uh, designs there. Well, we've got to present a full set of construction documents, so. We've got to have a full plan before we come before. Oh, okay. Uh, but will any of this change, you think? Not before we bring the plans in, no. No, I mean, it's that's that's what the plan is, but we have to have construction documents to bring those before the uh, the planning commission for site plan review and uh, Can I have a date document for that? review. Right. That is correct. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Linda Solomon, 8246 Huntington Road. Another um, thing that I wanted to say is um, we really do not want um, any tarps along the fence, and I hope that is... I've, I've heard that loud and clear. Okay, great. Yep, well, and the only time we would even use those if it was something, you know, related to animal issues or <coughs> something where, you know, we had to tarp something off for the animals. That's those are the only ones that are out there now. Jason Jordanovich, uh, one more question on timing. I mean, I was under the impression that the tiger was something that was going to happen in 2018. And now if I'm hearing correctly, it's going over the dinosauria, which is going to run until September. So when is the timeline of this process? Well, the first step, Jason, is to get approval from the uh, Planning Commission, uh, site plan approval. Uh, so that'll be first. And uh, we have contracted with a uh, contractor, uh, Turner Construction. Uh, so we, we hope to have the exhibit completed by the end of next year, or mm -hmm. this year, I'm sorry. Okay. And, and the planning will begin in the spring? Planting? Planting. Yes. Shonda Lowry Sachs, 8326 Huntington. Um, so I'm directly across from the green belt between the lions and the tigers. Uh, I just had a few questions. So right here, is this going to be a road or is this going to be trees? What, what happens between? There'll be um, a um, maintenance access road there, but the trees will be on the, both sides of the fence in between the, the road and the, the fence. Okay, so the trees would be right up against the fence. Yes. Mm -hmm. And eventually, hopefully, blocking. Fill in, yep. Okay, and then I just wanted to go back to, um, I know it's not what's being addressed here, but I think in the beginning you were talking about um, event, you know, future plans for other exhibit ex expansions. And did you say that there was a plan to possibly um, do something with that area that is in between the lions and the tigers. It's all trees and all 
pathway? No, not currently. I mean, the, when we do the Stone Leopard exhibit, there may be some expansion eastward of that. Which would be to the east of the it lines? It would be, right. yes. Okay. Yeah. And but I think that's, the, the, those plans aren't solid yet, or we don't, I, I really can't tell you anything okay. about I that. I think as Ray Evendian has said, um, it would be, I think that's what he's saying, but I think it would be a great idea, I think as we've already heard, to think ahead to if you are going to, you know, cut down a lot mm -hmm. to maybe start the planting first. Yep. You know, right along the fence so that we don't, again, have a clear yep. cut. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Wall, 8216 Huntington Road. I just have one more comment, Jerry. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I realize that you guys uh, planted a lot on the, uh, the Huntington Wood side of the fence this mm -hmm. past season. And um, I'm just not certain that there's been any maintenance to those plantings. And I just want to make sure that there is some some plan implemented because, um, you know, it just looks like there's, you know, there there might not be. So I just wanted to there bring that up yeah. um, to make sure that, you know, because I know you guys don't see our side. We plan and, to maintain uh, So I just want to make sure that that's okay. in place. Um, just one comment. 30% of what was planted along that curve died, and we replaced that. Okay. So that's part of the maintenance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? more until next month or whatever, but what, what material is that wall made out of? I'm just curious. That's not a wall, that's a fence with planting. So like a wooden fence or? No, a wooden cyclone, material? tall. Um, is that a metal or what? Yeah. Okay. Like like the Huntington fence. Oh, okay, so you'll be able to see through it except for the planting? Not with the plantings, no. Okay. Um, and then the other, the red pandas, I think you said, when, when, and you may have covered that when you were going over your master plan, when is that exhibit due to be built or? So, uh, it's concurrent with the tiger exhibit. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> um, anything else from the public? Okay. Public participation is closed. I would like to thank the representatives from the zoo for their ear and their candid uh, you know, your candor and uh, your engagement with us. Uh, I think we'd all like to thank uh, the folks uh, from the public who commented so civilly. And hopefully uh, you heard the concerns and they're registered. And going forward, we're gonna have a healthier uh, dialogue. And uh, we we'll heard see it, you next month. We heard it loud and clear. Yeah, so thank, thank you very you. much. We'll see you next Thanks month. Thanks for everyone's feedback and uh, taking the time to come out tonight to, to talk to us. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I think at any time, you can <coughs> certainly call Amy. I know you all have her phone number, but you're welcome to call over to the zoo, too, and several of you have, or, or send emails. So we're always willing to listen. Thank you. My thanks, pleasure. guys. And My thanks pleasure. to all of you for uh, your participation tonight. Um, I think we can move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the matter of discussion of proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance. Uh, I did. David was in the back uh, for most of this. Um, Hank or Amy, how do you want to proceed with? Do the, do yeah. we have to formally accept I don't think so. Okay. Do we, Hank? We don't have to formally accept anything, do we? Do we? Do we? Yeah. Actually, I'm kind of excited about the yeah. I know it doesn't sound like it, but I don't think so. <laughs> um, how do you want to handle the next item? Just a start off with an explanation much. of the, the process. When uh, the proposed zoning ordinance was put out, I did get feedback from a resident who brought up the, the three items that I have listed before you. And because the ball was already rolling, I wanted to keep that, that process going. So rather than stop it, go back, make these amendments to it, hold more public hearings, we thought we would just finish the process. So the zoning ordinance, as recommended to the city commission, is in fact adopted by the city, city recommended to the city commission, has been adopted and is in effect. What I would like to do is go back and take a look at these three items 
Um, and if you're in agreement that they should be revised in the new zoning ordinance, we'll set a public hearing for the meeting in February, and then we'll make recommendations to the city commission on these on these three items. So I don't. So know what 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 are you going to be looking for from the commission tonight? I'm looking for you a to see if you have any questions about yeah. what it is I propose, and two that you set a public hearing for your February meeting to get any uh, comments on these three uh, changes. Okay. Thanks. Are you going to say what your? Um, I, I do think it would be helpful for a brief overview of what the three changes sure. would be. Sure. Uh, the first item has to do with the definition of substantial improvement. I was getting into um, a discussion with the resident about what exactly substantial improvement meant and, and how to define it. And when we did a word search of the documents, the zoning documents. The uh, substantial improvement is not used in the zoning document. So we had it as a definition, but it is never, never referenced in the actual zoning ordinance. So rather than go through the process of trying to figure out, you know, make the definition clear of substantial improvement, we're recommending that it just be struck from the definition. That's the first one. Uh, second one, it has to do with uh, special land uses. There is a provision that says that uh, special land use procedures shall meet the standards of Article 8, um, and it applies to properties within the zoning ordinance and any properties within a proposed historic district. And that wasn't real clear what a proposed historic district is. At what point does a historic district become proposed and is then subject to special land use approval? Well, it's actually guided by the uh, historic district, uh, local historic district act. So we thought we would just add a caveat to that, saying that uh, the proposed historic, historic district, as per or consistent with Public Act 169, so when that trigger is, is met and a, a district is considered proposed and is subject to special land use, that it would be guided by uh, that uh, historic district ordinance. And then the, the last one uh, is prohibited home occupations. And there were some uses that were prohibited and in the new ordinance there are two uses that were not in the prior ordinance, and I just want to get clarification from Planning Commission if you want to add them or if you want to strike them so that the uh, ordinance consistent with what we had prior, and that would be uh, businesses in your home of a law office or real estate office. Again, those were not prohibited in the old ordinance, and they are now prohibited in the current ordinance, and want to see if the Planning Commission is comfortable with that or if you want to go back to the original version. Of so the if we were to uh, go back, it would mean that you can practice law or have a real estate office in the neighborhood? Yes. Now keep in mind, uh, home occupations still have to meet the spirit of the ordinance. So if there's a noise issue, if there's a parking right. issue, etc., then we can still uh, prohibit them. But on their surface, if there isn't an issue, then they wouldn't be permitted uses. Or you could say, no, they're, they're prohibited uses. And, but social worker, counselor, psychologist, or psychiatrist would still be prohibited? Mm -hmm. And what's the reason for the distinction between those and on the one hand and law office and real estate office on the other hand? Uh, the type of clientele that the different uses receive. Okay. Uh, anyone have any questions or comments for Amy? Sheldon? Yeah, um, it, it, or, or Hank, the question of substantial improvement, was that a term that was used in the prior ordinance? No. That's what it okay. Means. How was it determined? I, I assume, it, and this is all speculation because it wasn't used before, it wasn't used this time, <laughs> but it, it, did it have to do, or might it have been somehow leading to a question of when a permit might be needed? Um, or, or planning, no, it a was plan, site plan approval? It was more to when the house was treated as a new house versus an addition. Was what they would use the term as substantial improvement, but they never did. So at the beginning, at the top of it, we say that if only 50% of the house is being remodeled or 50% of structure is being remodeled, it is considered to be new. 
So this was a term that just it never existed. So it's basically what Amy's asking for is to, to do some house cleaning. It's an artifact. Yeah, okay. exactly. It doesn't matter. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Brian, are we, are we tasked with voting on these yes or no, all three of them tonight? No. No, we should no. task with not even <coughs> a public hearing okay. for the next meeting so that they can be discussed at an official public forum. And then at that point in time, you'll be asked to make a recommendation to the city commission. It's basically what we did in, in the narrowest sense. Much for, narrower. Yeah, for the zoning ordinances. That's, it's that's just uh, cleaning up a few loose ends. That's correct. Uh, anyone else have any comments? Yeah, we so, I mean, in order to have the public hearing, we should all agree on what should be going forward to the public hearing. So in that sense, we should agree with what's here. I don't personally understand, excuse me, the special land use section. Um, you're, you're, you want to <coughs> add the wording or within a proposed historic district? No, I was going to ask that. Let me ex explain that again. Right now, the way the ordinance reads in the new ordinance, it says special land use for a special land uses permit are required for properties located within a historic district. So that and that's not new. That's the way it's right. always is. Or within a proposed historic district. So when does when does a proposed historic district become proposed enough to need? A special land use is it when somebody mentions that it's a good idea to have a historic district, or is it all the way at the end when the city commissioner is ready to vote on it? And what that trigger is uh, that would require special land use is actually in the historic district act itself, and it's very specific that there's a certain point in the process, and then the city commission can determine that those homes need to go through uh, special land use approval. So rather than write all that into the ordinance, we would just say that, that a proposed historic district consistent with public act, whatever it is, so that it would be clear when a home is in a proposed historic district, if that ever happens. But that, that's not on the radar. I don't want anybody. So is that part of the Michigan requirements for how this should be? I mean, it seems like I, I'm a little con concerned that we're expanding purview of the historic district commission no. at a point at which we're just directing well, sure we are at some point yeah. they get to have special land use approval over when people's homes before they're officially in the historic well district. that happened before when we did the study and we closed down all of LaSalle from the front to the back of Huntington Woods and we had all the area over the hill past Wyoming it was all in within what PA 169 allowed because we wanted to do a study to make sure we weren't missing out on any important areas. And then because we had a small commission uh, or a small study committee, we ended up narrowing it to the area that is now presently the historic district, mostly because that was the highest percentage of, of uh, homes that um, contributed to the historic district within that area. But in order to be able to do the study, the city commission voted to not allow any changes, any building, any anything within a pretty large area so that people couldn't go in and like tear down the oldest home in Huntington Woods or Baker House or something like that. And it didn't last a long time. And during that time, when people wanted to do something, they came to the study committee and, and we heard what they had to say and what they needed to do and made decisions just like we do here. So it's it's driven by PA 169 and it's for the purpose of protecting areas and the city seeing those areas important to the historic aspect of the city. So it's not anything new or different, it's that's just the way that we do it. And just for one other point of clarification on this, uh, Public Act 169 in 1970 is the actual act. The city commission is the body that decides ultimately whether or not they're going to go with any language changes or whatever. Mm -hmm. This isn't a situation where uh, Amy, myself, we're coming here to ask you to 
allow the historic district commission any more or less freedoms because the planning commission does not govern mm -hmm. the historic district commission. The historic district commission would report to the city commission. This, however, is the forum for where you make language changes to the zoning board or to the zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. And as a result, what Amy is trying to do here, and Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, but what we're trying to do here is trying to get a reference, a point of reference, so that if somebody wanted to find out how this happens and what this is, it gives them a place and it gives them a finite area which they can look to, which is Public Act 159, to determine exactly how the process goes. Mm -hmm. And it, it just adds the clarification that we felt was currently missing. Any other comments from the panel? I'm fine with items one and two. Uh, the third article seems to me that it may need some discussion. Uh, if I understand correctly, Amy, you're just questioning whether the law office and real estate office ought to be added from what was previously there. I mean deleted. Or, it already or has, it been, has added. been added. Yeah. Or should it, should it remain or should it be deleted? Um, and I guess I don't recall from our conversations on the zoning ordinance a lot of discussion of this item and what ought to be in there or not, but it it begs a lot of questions for me are why there's some things in there and not other things. And I think I understand the intent of it in terms of anything hazardous, number of cars parked on the road um, might be that, but I, I question differentiating between um, a lawyer and a counselor in terms of the ability to have their business out of their home and whether that's our let me, uh, th does anyone else have that concern about how do uh, we distinguish? Yeah, I, I, I would. Yeah. Oh, so there's a bias. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like suggesting that if you're seeking psychiatric help, you're a, a nuisance or a danger. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this question. Where do we get that definition from? I'm sorry, what was that? Where do we get that, or, or that list of uh, occupation or businesses yeah. from? That's Culture. been in the existing zoning ordinance. It has? Yeah. Um, there's there's several things in there that you might not think there's good reason for, but there is. What what's your opinion about the social worker, counselor, psychologist, or psychiatrist? They should not be practicing the home environment. Because there's been several instances where people that have been treated for various things have caused um, incidents with the office. A public safety issue? Yeah. And massage therapy? It's the massage therapy was kind of the same. There was a way of uh, controlling it. I don't recall any specific incidents for massage therapy, but I do recall specific incidents for um, psychiatrists, psychologists, and counselors. I, Aaron, you suggested earlier that we should have consensus before we vote this out. Um, I'm not sure we're going to be able to arrive at consensus on this tonight because, and I'm not saying we shouldn't vote it out. I'm saying I personally have a lot of questions too, and. I'm, I'm thinking that it's something that may warrant uh, further discussion to make sure that we're not being arbitrary. I'm not saying, Hank, no, we I are being arbitrary, but it strikes me, and I think it strikes some members of the commission that we want to better understand why some would be included and some would be excluded. Yeah, I, and, and Isn't that the point of the public? Is that yes, the that's something we would do at so the public so meeting. So what I would recommend is going forward with the uh, recommendation to bring this before the public. We could talk about it then, we could hear comments. I think at the public hearing, we would like to hear, or I think I hear people saying this, uh, someone to talk about why those occupations are there, why others aren't, so we can have a fair understanding of, of this list. Because my visceral reaction is, um, I, you know, even though there may be occasional uh, issues, just the idea of saying we're worried about psychiatric patients or psychological patients. I mean, I, I'd want to hear it. Personally, but are people okay? Uh, we have to hear public comment first. Would voting to have a public hearing next month, and then we'll deal with it in due course. Move to set a public hearing. I think we need uh, public participation first, Sheldon. Is that correct? Uh -oh. No. I uh, said so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, is, 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 does anyone have any further comments before I open up for public participation? I I, I actually am very worried about the idea of the appeals board. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So I had to say it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I think we're all okay with the auto repair. Um, so, Andy, getting to what you're saying, right? The, but the process would be that after the public 
So there would be a public hearing next month or whenever it gets scheduled. We could make modifications at that point that we were comfortable with based on the feedback of the public and based on our own, our own input in order to send it forward to the Civic Commission I'm for assuming approval that's the or case. denial. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Right. I feel like we've already used a chunk of time for this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is going to take a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> any comments before I open up to public participation? Okay. Anyone uh, want to uh, comment on this? Before a public hearing, do we distribute like um, potential topics? Like just at this is the first I've heard of it. Like I'm thinking like what if you have a business in your home that is on the restricted list, but it's like merchandise or like it's rent. What? Like you, what if you do counseling? Like from your, what if your home is your, but it's all online or something like that. Like I'm just thinking like that. There's could I. Agree with you that this could be like a big, you know, open. Who knows where it could go? No, like, is there a way we could structure it before? Like, I'm just wondering where this other. I mean, that's point. that's a great mm -hmm. point. And if somebody that's in house here now, you know, either this is video visits and. Uh, I mean, we, we, or makes videos and <laughs> sells them. Or I mean, we could be getting into them. an area that's Thanks, you know yeah. really complicated, but it's before us now. And Hank and Amy, in light of these concerns that you're hearing. What do you think the best way to prepare for the hearing is so that people have notice? And well, I, I think you're following the procedure okay. that described. Um, if, you if you do set up a public hearing, it'll appear on the agenda. It'll go out. Uh, it will be July 1st. It turns out on a weekly basis. Um, the agenda will go out, and there will be on cable. It'll be on uh, you know, the city website, so it'll be available for people to see, but the public hearing, the point of the public hearing is to get it out in front of the public. So I think by setting up a public hearing, you're certainly doing that at that point in time, like any other time, you'll be receiving materials. If you want some supporting documentation to the extent that we can get it by without violating any HIPAA um, and such things like that, we would provide it. Um, knowing what you're looking for at this point in time is helpful. But I think that's what you what you should do. Okay. I mean, I, I would put it out in front of the public. Okay, cool. Um, any other public comment? Does it, the public comment only deal with what Amy was talking yes, about? Yes, at this time. Mayor Vedian, 8360. Some of you already have that memorized, I think. <laughs> um, <coughs> forgive me. I'm not sure what these occupations are. If I have violated my uh, uh, duty to be informed, it's my fault. Okay. Currently in front of you, what are the occupations that you're uh, considering either leaving on or taking off? Do we have a list? There, there is a list. You're welcome to look at it. And it's the, uh, the list law. of uh, occupations and ordinance that we passed that are prohibited from being practiced inside uh, the home at this time and we're right now talking about how and whether to revise that list primarily and that's going to be up for discussion next month at a public hearing primarily with the down below further that list right there ah, ah, thank you. mr. chairman just so, to be clear on this too it's providing that everything that's on that list except for the law office and the real estate office has been on that list for years and years and years which is interesting to hear definitely we got it. Um, any other public comments? Okay, public participation is closed. And we want to make a motion for putting this up for okay. public move, hearing. Move to set the public hearing based on the three proposed amendments. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it passes. Uh, the last item on the agenda <coughs> is general public participation. If anyone would like to talk about any issues. Linda Salvin, 8246 Huntington. I would like the um, commission to revisit the zoning ordinances that deal with the zoo. I think that um, it's very important to maintain site plan approval for everything that we can see. 120 feet from the center of Huntington Road is 
not very far from the center of Huntington Road to the fence, you're talking 30 feet. So you're only talking 90 feet into um, the zoo, which is minimal. I mean, the, um, the current tiger exhibit is about 90 feet in. So, um, you know, with their service road, that leaves very little property that um, they're gonna do anything with. We I think we need to expand the scope of what we have site plan approval over. Um, you know, they were very uh, nice tonight and thanking everyone for their comments and everything, but they continue to act in a manner that ignores us and ignores how, what we see from Huntington Road. And um, they, it seems to me like they wanna be good neighbors, but they just don't get it. Like it doesn't occur to them to uh, think about what it, what, what it is that we look at. You know, yes, the, it was a mess at the corner of Huntington Road. Why, why did they think that was okay? Because they're not thinking about it. We need to tell them and we need to have some kind of um, set up so that, so that they have to come to us for things like this. But just so you know, uh, there never has been and is not any ordinance that would apply to those trees. I don't care about the trees. I really don't, the, I don't care about the trees. Uh, what I care about is that what happened with the penguinarium is gonna move on up Huntington Road. And yeah. there's over half a mile of undeveloped land right now that you know they get a lot of tax money. They have a lot of beneficiaries there that are contributing. Every one of their projects has a family name behind it. They, you know, every, it's a feel good type of place to donate. And um, it's a matter of time before, you know, everyone was a little surprised from my, of my neighbors, you know, that the next plan is going to be to expand the lions. So, uh, like I said, there's over half a mile still of <coughs> undeveloped property along Huntington Road. And, um, I, I just feel like I don't understand why we, why we would voluntarily give that up. You know, for a long time, the zoo did nothing. You know, they were in financial trouble. Um, now they have a foundation. They're getting taxes from the Tri-County area. They're the number one exhibit in the state. They're rolling in money and they are in expansion mode. And, um, you know, it just, it, it just makes sense that we would want to keep our eyes on them and that they would be required to come to us. When I called, um, not Van Acker, the other man, Good, Paul Good, uh, he, he told me he, on the phone, you know, I came home from work and all the trees, and he said 10 or 12 trees. We are talking hundreds of trees, minimum 300 trees came down, and he knows that. Anyway, when I called, he says, it's a habitat for the tigers and we don't need site planning review. I'm going into a meeting and you'll have to talk to your city. And, that's, and that was it. So he was under the impression that he does not have to come before you. You know, it's only because we've uh, gotten, our, our gotten together and come before the commissioners. This is, you know, we're going on three months now. And, um, you know, and, and I, I just think that it's a mistake to give up our oversight. It doesn't make sense. Hank, can you help us understand a little bit about what, uh, forget about the Planning Commission, the City of Huntington Woods, what our jurisdiction over the zoo really looks like? As I understood it, what we have now with them is really a courtesy. Uh, they don't have to run anything by us. If they wanted to stonewall us tomorrow and say, we're going to do what we want, do we have any control? No, we have an ordinance in place, <coughs> and the ordinance requires you know that they come before us for certain things. Um, and is the, that that 120 foot that's, perimeter? That's where we're at with that, and currently, um, and, and I'm and I'm not going to speak for Linda. Um, she's eloquent and does a you know does a, a good job herself, but I think the concern is is that they want to make sure that anything that might remotely affect the lifestyle on Huntington is visited by the Planning Commission. And I think from the zoo's perspective is that they're used to years and years and years where nothing really happened in there. Well, and 
that's it. So, so I, I mean, just so the, the, there's a disconnect that I have right here. Yeah. I don't, and I'm curious whether people on the commission who were here last year, the year before, have the same disconnect. And maybe I got bad spatial reasoning. But I remember thinking that we were taking care of Huntington with the 120 foot ribbon. Yeah. And now correct. what we're hearing tonight is well, maybe we're not. Maybe, you know, and I've never looked at the Penguinarium and, but maybe, wow. we're, maybe, maybe well, there I, is you know, more the, space that we need. I, I think I, I just want to point something out too. The Penguinarium is in Royal Oak. Oh, it's in Royal Oak? Oh, yeah. oh is that why? Not it's in Royal Oak. Okay. <laughs> but is 120 feet enough? Oh, I don't have it. That was what was decided by the planning committee. What we did is we sat down and we looked at 120 feet touches every zoo exhibit that goes along that Huntington too. Road. It touches right. all of it. The ones that we were saying we we aren't going to site review are things that are deeper, in the deeper zoo. into the zoo. Like there's like for us to do a site plan review on the wolf exhibit, it is it is so far in it we can't I, see it from yeah. Huntington Woods. And so when we decided that that hundred and I thought it was 150 feet actually. That's what I too. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's 120. I think it's 150. No, it's 100. It says 120. Okay, so I we actually had I measurements. Yeah. Yeah. There we was actually a drew. We do. A, we had a diagram. Mm -hmm. We looked at where 120 feet got us, and it touches every exhibit that runs along Huntington Road that is in, within Huntington Woods. We can't do anything about the the ones in Royal Oak. So, so that was the logic right. behind that 120 feet. Is that is that it touches the tigers and the lions and but that you green belt? About the future. Well. No, we we were. We're saying anything that that touches that fence line means we have we have over. purview over. But not the things that are deeper into the zoo, like wow. the lions and the or the, the llamas and the the wolves. That was the that was the logic behind this. That anything that we could actually see. Well, you can from see a lot further than a hundred. I I understand, seven. but okay. but what I'm saying is that anything that ran along that that edge, we would have more control so over. even if it abuts it we have jurisdiction over the whole right. thing if right there's, if there's an exhibit that just grazes the 120 foot ribbon or whatever we're we calling got, it we got the whole thing yeah if it's what i recall is that right Hank? yeah, yeah. That's correct. no that's right is that clear in the ordinance yeah. oh, i don't think that, that's why the tigers are but what you yeah. have come before us talking about is trees and we well, can talk about landscaping and trees, but we don't have a tree ordinance. We can't prevent them from taking the trees down if that's what they need to do in order to move forward. And when they bring the site plan in front of us, we're fine. We're, then we I can mean, talk we're not about fine it. with the trees coming down, and we understand that we, that we have no control over the trees. But what we're concerned about is when they are done, that what we look at is is ugly, and. That you do have, you, that we should have control and, over. And, it's, we do. and that's why we they're coming the forward for site plan review. Anything that touches the edge, that, that 120, anything that, that runs along Huntington has to come here for site plan review. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I will say there is the language is not very inclusive. And I was reading this again today. And, you know, I mean, I take my share of blame for letting it go through, but it says impact on the health and safety of the residents. That's the purview. It's I, not. I thought there was more than that in it. I thought it was health, safety, and, and the physical appearance. That was, that was my intention when I agreed to the 120 foot, but it says health and safety. Well, that may have been that something got left out because we talked about how it physically looked. Yeah, I agree. Good. I agree with you. But we if you look at the that. ordinance as it as it is written now, and it says health and safety. Well, what I would suggest that we do, because everyone, you know, add it to the list. You're, 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 I have over twenty five names that are have signed a petition that are are they didn't understand. You know, we're all kind of new to the uh, formal hearings and appearing, and and you know they. So they left, but I, people are very concerned about this, and they're also concerned about the future. I mean, it's the tiger exhibit now, but down the road, it's going to be something else. Linda, what we're going to do, if everyone's well, okay with the, it, the, uh, I, let me let me finish to address one of the other things we talked about in this whole thing was that we don't have a good as 
as a commission, we don't have a good understanding of what the exhibit has to be for the health and wellness of the animal. Mm -hmm. and for And so the other part of this was some of the design, and, and, I, and I get not like looking at the back of a wall with a bunch of mechanicals, some of the design of the environments has to do with the health and welfare of the animal. And I believe we also agree that we did not have the expertise to say yes or no to something that's designed for the health and wealth, welfare of the animal. So You're that might right. have been so that might have been why that physical look of it did not end up in the ordinance. Well, mm -hmm. I do well, remember I, that. So so I mean discussion. that was that was part of the discussion and and I and I believe that what the thought process was and correct me if I'm wrong, but the thought process was that when they come forward for site plan review, we would have an idea of what it's physically going to look at and we could make commentary on that mm -hmm. and we could deny based on that but that we can't dictate to them what a site plan should look like for the health and the wellness of the animal yeah, but how would that stand up right so i agree with you completely everything you're saying i 100 percent agree with right i don't want to tell them how a how a habitat right, should can't. be for the animal right we can't i simply want to look out for the residents and to me that's the health of the residents, the safety of the residents, and the ability for them to enjoy their own property. And, right? and I don't and disagree so, with you. And either. I don't think anyone disagrees, but let me ask and Hank and Amy, here, so if what, what's your recollection of this issue? Because I think there's a consensus that we did think that if it was going to yeah. impact uh, us, we would have jurisdiction. And the way it's, Aaron says it's written suggests that it might be a little too loosely written. So. Do you have any comment on that? And maybe what we should do is offline, if that's permitted, we'll take a look at this and see whether or not we need some wordsmithing to have an ordinance that's consistent with the obvious intent of the commission. So, well, Amy, more well, I want to ask Amy's okay. opinion. One of the things that plant commission needs to keep in mind is that the zoo, the animal habitats are permitted use within the zoo. So at no point does the planning commission of the city have the authority to say, you can't build. You can't expand your animal habitat. You can't put it there. It's, it's the zoo as a permitted use within the zoo. Um, what, what you can do is take a look at what the impact is on residents in terms of noise, sound, uh, uh, you know, the uh, screening of the mechanical equipment. Property values. Well, uh, please let her finish. So the, the question is not, how big should the tiger ha habitat be or where should it go or it can't go there because I don't want the tree taken down. It should be, now that you're going to expand the tiger habitat, how is this going to impact the residents and how do we mitigate that? And in this case, it's a landscaping plan that, that they're going to bring at the meeting in February. Right. Okay. Sheldon? Andy? I, you know, the, the commission had substantial discussions about that. You know about all of these topics, mm -hmm. including the the appearance thing. I think, mm -hmm. and what we did did is made a legislative determination mm -hmm. that 120 feet was a reasonable yep. ribbon of of review space that we needed in order to take into account the the concerns, the likely concerns of the neighborhoods in terms of uh, neighbors in terms of noise and odors and whatever else went on in that direction. And, and if we have to revisit that and decide whether or not it was appropriate judgment, that's fine. Uh, you know, if, if it should be 125 feet or 195 feet or whatever the story is, um, <clears throat> then I, I, think, I think we need the input from the zoo as well as to how it would impact them because, you know, they're, they're a stakeholder here. What do you think of uh, Aaron's point, though, about the to <coughs> add, what, was, what were the words? The health and safety. Just health and safety and it being limited at that. I mean, did, did, do you think that reflects our intent? Yeah. You do? Yeah, I do. Why? I do. Why? Because what because, about appearance? Because I think it involves noise and, and that sort of thing. And I think taking into the matter the appearance, other than perhaps landscaping or something like that, gets into design features that I right. I have no confidence in and want to develop no confidence okay. in, and I don't think the city should hire people to, f to get that confidence in to make second judgments about the 
or to second guess judgments that are made by the zoo as to how they're going to operate their um, animal habitats. Thank I want you. nothing to do with that. Allison? Just curious, what would happen if the um, Penguinarium were in Huntington Woods and they came before us? Do we have any grounds for not approving a building like that? Because we would basically be telling them what their animals need or don't need. Is there any... Well, my I think that's a good question. We could, we could comment on the aesthetics that faced us. Okay. Right, right? So I don't know what it looks like now, but it sounds like it's a big brick oh, wall. Yeah, if but I that is a really good question, the one that's going through my mind, too. <coughs> what ends if the Penguinarium were in Huntington Woods? What, what's, it, what's our yeah, jurisdiction? Um, yeah, it's, see, here, here's the thing. When you take a look at the Penguinarium, that's why it's really not apples to apples, because the Penguinarium wouldn't happen in Huntington Woods anyway. We have height restrictions. There's, there's all kinds of different things that would have happened. That would have been gone through site plan. When you go through site plan review, the purpose of a site plan review is to review the site, just by the very nature of it. So <coughs> when uh, the tiger exhibit comes through, when they finally give us the entire plans, I expect to see a landscape plan, and I expect to see how they anticipate shielding that tiger exhibit from the residents in Huntington Woods. That's what I expect to be on the landscape plan. How are they, A, going to mitigate the impact from Huntington, from Huntington Road? And, and a landscape plan is paramount for that. I mean, if they put up all these trees and they define what trees they are, what heights they are, where they're going, and everything like that, that goes a long way towards accomplishing what the people on Huntington are looking for and, quite frankly, are entitled to. So, with the so if I understand... With respect to the Penguin area, A, it, it has to have a height restriction... Yeah, feet. absolutely. I it's think it's taller than that. So it wouldn't be, wouldn't be that tall. That's just a zoning requirement. Two, we have noise ordinances so that the generator, the mechanical equipment on the top were too loud. We would be able to address that. Three, they wouldn't be, a tarp wouldn't be allowed because we have provisions that wouldn't permit that. And four, they would have to provide a landscaping plan. So I, I want you to understand that if they did want to build a penguin area in Huntington Woods, they can because it's a zoo. And, and but it's the, they issues. can only do it within certain restrictions. Yeah. Aaron? So the, I'm trying to make sure I understand the ordinance properly, right? And so it says health and it says safety, which bugs me because it seems to limit, but it also says it's um, under site plan review as set forth by section 4356. So I'm not sure what that gives us purview over. Like when I read it says health and safety, then I say, wait a minute, the only thing I can comment on are health and safety items. But you say you can comment on anything. So I mean, I don't know how I read that authority into this statement. I have two other things I wanted to say. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on a second, because I've been trying to make this I'm point connected. for a couple minutes. I don't understand how that authority is granted. I think by the very nature of the city commission allowing you to have site plan review, it gives you the purview over things that would normally go on in the site plan review. When you review a site plan for a house, when you review a site plan for a commercial building, when you review anything for that nature, mm -hmm. what you're provided with is a, a survey, a landscape plan, those type of things. Those are what you're going to see, and those are what I anticipate the zoo bringing in for the tiger. Exhibit. Okay, I, I, I get that, but, but when I see a site <coughs> plan for a house, I look at it through a specific lens that's defined in the zoning ordinance. I look at fenestration. I look at do they have a two-story entrance. I look at do they have a garage ahead of the main door, right? I look at it through the lens of specific things that are stated to be within my purview. When I look at this, the things that are stated to be in my purview are health and safety. And that's what concerns me. I don't understand how you broaden that scope from just health and safety just because they brought it here. Because, right, if they dug their heels in, again, if they dug their heels in decided to take it to court, I'm not sure what leg we have to stand on. I, I agree. When we're, we're, we're looking at houses, we're not told to look at houses only for the health and safety of the surrounding neighbors. We, uh, right. I, then again, you know, and, and, and again, Wanting to broaden the discussion on this may be fine, but I mean, I think that you also have to take into consideration that when you're looking at commercial buildings and you're looking at houses, you're not considering <coughs> the welfare of animals over which we have little to no knowledge as to what they require. So I think that this is a somewhat of a different, well, with all due respect, somewhat of a different animal 
But the, the thing is, is that they have certain requirements that they have to meet through the AZA, mm -hmm. which we know nothing about. And they have certain requirements that they have to meet for other zoological accreditations that they have to make. We have height restrictions. We have area restrictions. We have screening restrictions. All of these things come into play when you're doing a site plan. And do they come into health and welfare and that? Yeah, they do, because you know what? The people on Huntington are entitled to that, and that's why we have the site plan reviews within the 120 feet. The 120 feet was what mm -hmm. was decided on by the Planning Commission and what was decided on and agreed to by the City Commission as being a number that had a reasonable expectation of, like Joel said, hitting every exhibit that was along the fence line. So anything that is at or closer to the fence line or at or closer than what you've got right now is going to be reviewed. Okay, your final if it was If it was 121 feet from the center of Huntington Road, they will not fall under your site plan review. That's the true. zoo is very smart. They also have a 500 square foot addition that they, haven't, that they didn't mention today, lobby to their building. You in this, in this zoning ordinance says 500 square feet or less does not require site plan review. So you are eliminating, you're just ignoring a lot of things that could affect us and you're just you know, erasing them from what, what you are supposed to be looking at. Okay, any final comments? Yes. What's that? You do allow tarping within the 120 feet from the center of Huntington Road. And um, the zoo has asked for it because they say it protects the animals. Well, the camels, did, I can't remember how old he said the zoo is, like 90 years old. Okay, for 80 years, the camels have not had any tarping around them. And they, um, when they put up all the tarps, you know, before they took them down, they tarped off <coughs> that area at Wareham. And, um, and it's maybe like 15 or 20 feet within the, the, the perimeter fence. Now that is allowed. You have exceptions in our zoning ordinance and that is allowed there. And the funny thing is, the camels are taller than the tarps. The camels, you walk by and they're looking at us. So how are they being protected? So uh, when I asked him about that, he said, well, we have other animals there. Well, if the other animals, if, if it's not safe for the other animals to be there, then they should be putting their animals inside the zoo. We should not have to look at the tarp. And you know what, I, I hear that a lot of you haven't seen what I'm talking about, and I happen to have some pictures and, um, and one of them is the camels looking over the tarp. Here we are here. This is the tarp, and it's less than 20 feet inside the perimeter fence. This is, um, oh, this is here. This is um, the future tiger exhibit. I have a few of these. I don't, I know you know what it is. Um, And just because we have height restrictions doesn't mean that they wouldn't build something hideous a, a little shorter to, to meet our restrictions or what's required by site planning. I really think that um, it's important. I'm not asking you to be experts in habitats. I'm just asking that you protect the residents out along Huntington Road that have invested a lot of money in their houses. It's a very pretty street, and it's not going to be pretty when they're done. You, you very well made your points, and I think that it warrants a conversation to make sure that this commission is fully informed about your concerns, about what limitations, what the actual uh, ordinances do and do not require and allow. And thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. I have one very brief comment. Way of Eating, 8366 Huntington Road. I am really with Aaron Sullivan. 
I'm not a lawyer, but I like the way he's thinking. He, you cannot just leave things to open interpretation. If I were a lawyer, I'd want to define everything very clearly. What is included and what is not included in the purview that he's referring to. And I don't think it's just health and safety. Unless you mean mental health, because a lot of these folks are on the edge right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really think that your job starts with going back to where we were, what we gave up. Did we really do the right thing? Nobody's throwing tomatoes at you. Let's just revisit it in view of what has been discussed in the last two meetings, this commission and the city commission. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any further public comment? I just have one quick thank you, Rachel Wall, 8216 Huntington Road. Do any of you live, I don't think any of you live on Huntington. I do. You do? But not near but you. But you live not near the zoo. Do you live I do. near the zoo? Uh, camels. Okay. So like, I mean, <laughs> like if something drastically changed right out your front door, like I think you'd be feeling the same way and, you know, and you probably do and you're just kind of like trying to stay neutral right now because that's probably what you have to do. But um, it's like, it's so shocking. It's so shocking. So maybe 120 feet, like it seemed logical totally. But then when you see things happening, like right outside your front door, and I'm all for the zoo and, you know, making sure the animals are well cared for. But it's just like, you know, when things change, you just have to make sure that, you know, everything is on both sides is, you know, still in balance. Um, so that's all I got. Thank, Thank you. Thank so you. <laughs> Anyone else? public participation. Hank, can I ask two questions not related to this? Yes, sir. One, why are we not getting any site plan approvals for houses the last three months? What's going on, we if anything? We typically, in January, February, December, we don't have a meeting. Uh, typically, long about November is the last of the site plans that you get and picks back up. I still remember this a lull before. Am well, I wrong? This isn't and, and again, the thing is, is that if your if your concern is, is that is there a downturn in the housing market? Yeah, was my concern. Um, the <laughs> <is there. laughs> well, maybe the older so, guy. Um, don't don't discount property, what you're seeing, uh, what you're not seeing, which is the multitude of kitchens, bathrooms, um, family rooms, remodeling inside of the footprint of houses that wouldn't come before you because that's still going on. Typically, the cycle, the way that it works is, is that people want to be in the ground by November so that they can work on the projects through December and January. In February, people are typically, and we already have projects that are slated to come in for February, um, but February is when we start to see it. March is when people get in a big hurry to get their stuff set so they can get in the ground in April and May. So typically, the March, April, May, June meetings are some of your busiest. Okay, thank you. And I got a couple complaints. People just reached out about some bright sign that is now on the corner of, is it Woodward and Nadine? It's gone. It's gone? Yeah, it's been shut off. They opened that and they put a sign up without a permit and that, that's been shut down. Um, the vehicles that were parked out in front have been removed. Okay, thank and, you. And uh, the sign, um, they're going to come in and re revisit the sign. It was a moving sign that uh, flashed different messages and an extremely bright right, at night. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> our ordinance first off doesn't permit that at all after 11 o'clock, and it doesn't permit it um, uh, to be flashing, moving, or anything like that. So the conversation's been had, um, the letters have been issued, and the sign, if you go by it tonight, is off and it will remain off until we come up with an equitable solution. Thank you very much. Anything else, guys? So, I'm not sure where we're leaving this. Um, normally, right, we review houses and it's all pretty straightforward, right, but it seems like there's some general thought on that something should happen with what we have with the zoo ordinance. Is this the point where we make a request to add it as an agenda item when we review the other three topics next month, or? Uh, well, I mean, do we make a request well, to add well, it to the well, agenda? Candidly, what I was wanting to do, and tell if you guys agree with this, <clears throat> great. If not, I want to talk to Hank and um, Amy to better understand this um, and, and, and contextualize it. We heard a lot of stuff tonight, 
and I personally don't understand it. And anyone who wants to participate in any conversation is more than welcome. Uh, but I want to hear their expertise. I want to hear. I personally want to look at the language, uh, which I haven't done in a long time. But I do think that Linda has raised issues that are entitled to respect and consideration. And I was thinking about doing it informally first, to, so people could get their heads around this. Uh, but anyone who wants to participate in any conversation is fine with me. Mr. Chairman, so why, why, if I could, the, um, why don't I just offer this up as a possibility? Why don't we prepare a memo for the Planning Commission mm -hmm. for next month? We'll have the opportunity to ask uh, the city attorney to take a look at it and see if she feels that the language is ambiguous to address Aaron's point and his concern, because if he feels that it's a concern, then we should certainly take a look at Aaron's it. Aaron's never wrong. <laughs> well, we we'll, we'll like to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't want you saying that. In, in, in doing that, perhaps uh, maybe we can do that as a communication for the next meeting, and then you know the Planning Commission can take a look at it. And I think that way we can actually address some of the concerns that people might have. But in order to do it, we can't address it. <coughs> to address it tonight would be to address it on the floor. Right, and that's what I'm right. doing. That's, that's oh, no, I'm, I'm a, I think that's wonderful, Hank. I would greatly and, appreciate that. And so that what, what, I, what I would actually suggest is, you know, we, we're, we all know each other's emails because I want to talk to make sure I understand the scope of the issue. So before this is sent to the attorney or before a memo is crafted or visualized, you know, I'd like to at least discuss it to make sure that we've defined the issues collectively as to the ones that should be in that memo. Well, I think the point of the memo was to find out, based on the language that's currently there, that would be how correct. protected are we. That would yes, be that is a fundamentally what the issue no, but is. I think, but I think that, Red, that the whole point of the memo that he wants to craft is to send our current language to the attorney to find out. Yes, that, that's, okay. that's correct. correct. And I think that we, but I want to be, yeah, yeah. I want to be very careful about well, people starting to send emails back and forth, and I mean, there's no violation of any okay. open meetings right. act. I, I, I think that okay. what we could do is we could draft a memo, we could take a look at it, we could get opinions, <laughs> and uh, we could take a look at it and have something for you next month. Okay. And then yeah. if that's the case, right. then that yeah, we, it's great. you know, we certainly would do a service to the people's concerns that are on Huntington and the questions that the Planning Commission has. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I have a question, too, with <coughs> regard to how we look at commercial buildings in Huntington Woods. Uh -huh. When we reviewed Sam's Market, we weren't allowed to make any commentary on how it would look from the outside. I don't recall Be that. Yeah, we... I mean, we talked about it, but we couldn't, we couldn't impose our ideas on it because you said that, you know, the... It's a commercial building, and our ordinance doesn't allow for us to uh, talk about fenestration and things like that because it's not in the ordinance. That's to what the I extent that you you currently have an, a new ordinance between now and the time that there was, and there's a substantial difference between the commercial ordinance that you currently have in place versus the one that Sam's was reviewed under. Okay, okay. So I I just wanted because. No, that's fair. That's fair. But but just. To reiterate, we have mm -hmm. not had a commercial um, project since the time that we've adopted the new right. zoning ordinance, and uh, you all certainly remember the amount of time and sweat that you put into that. Mm -hmm. So, it, it currently is substantially more than what was there before for commercial property. I have a question. Can you give us an update on Sam's Market? Sam's Market now is currently undergoing the last of their inspections. Um, they as you can see, painted the outside. They've added new entryways to the uh, exterior of the structure. Um, they're moving substantially on the inside. The new HVAC systems have been put in. Um, she's making some real nice progress there. Workmen are there typically on an almost daily basis at this point in time. And uh, the building inspector has been out there. Inspections are being performed on that. We anticipate a fairly reasonably quick opening. You know, this memo, I think the thing that I would like to be looking for is to what extent is there an interrelationship between the ordinance and the authority that we have when it comes to site plan approval and what powers that give us to say yes or no. Um, because I don't have a good feel for that. Like, if it comes within our purview, 
because of one of those two words are, 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 are implicated, what can we do then to make sure that it's not a nuisance or that it's not nasty looking, that it's something that protects Huntington? Because uh, I don't have a good, you know, and we know what we can do for houses, right. but this is not a house. Right, and I think that the, what we're looking for is just to simply clarify that and, you know, actually give you a, some form of documentation as to what authority you have. And if that's the case, that should certainly serve to answer Aaron's questions, your concerns, and also the residents on Huntington. Okay. Anything and, else, guys? And, and, and you know, at, at that point in time, we'll bring it here. This everybody's <laughs> certainly welcome. These are there's no more open meetings in the planning commission. So, having said that, you know, we would anticipate having that here for the next month's meeting. And We'll, we'll, we'll let you know, and if there's something there that's glaringly omitted, then we'll certainly flush that out. Great. Great. Anything else, guys? Yep. Motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you.